20 strong chess players from nine federations compete in St. Louis. USChessChamps.com presents the third annual Winter Chess Classic. Hello, and welcome back to our live coverage of the Winter Chess Classic. As always, we are your hosts. My name is Caleb Denby. I'm joined by the wonderful Sabina Foyzier. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> today is round seven of the action. Can you believe uh, it? Yeah, two-thirds <laughs> of the tournament down, just this la these last three games to get through. Mm -hmm. And uh, who, do you, uh, who are your picks to win it all? I don't know. I haven't thought about it. For sure, Renat Jumabayev has done really great in, uh, in this tournament so of far. Course, He's yeah. the leader of the A group. But, uh, you know, there are some, quite some people trailing him. Um, yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, Jeffrey Zhang, Sam Sevin, Daniel Naroditsky, all hoping to, to catch up to the leaders there. For um, sure, and it's not going to be a tough, uh, it's not going to be something uh, very easy. Plus, Renat Jumabayev is playing against Sam Sevin today, so. Yes, perhaps a, a chance for Sam. Um, why don't we actually check out our, our standings in the A group? Uh, we have Renat Jumabayev with an incredible four and a half points out of six. That's plus three already in this event. And uh, so, you know, I was looking through his games before the show started. I don't think he's been worse in <laughs> six games. I, I don't think he's had a worse, like even slightly worse position. He's just playing good, uh, consistent, solid chess. For sure, and uh, he does have a pretty good uh, balance of his time. So I think um, that's that's something else very good. And I really like. The fact that after every round I see him downstairs with his opponent trying to go over yeah. the game, which is really nice because that's how you s start getting better, you know. Yeah, this it's very good form by uh, mm -hmm. Renat. Uh, Jeffrey sure. Zhang actually was defeated yesterday by the leader uh, in what was an incredibly complicated game, uh, but he'll be uh, looking to uh, make some points back up today. For course, sure. Jeffrey, the highest rated player in the A group. Daniel Naroditsky and Sam Sevin, of course, also both on three and a half points, just one point behind Renat. Uh, again, now is the time. Uh, if, you're there, if they're going to catch the leader, they have to start winning some games. For sure. Uh, Grigory Oprin, Sethu, and Viktor Erdos, all on three out of six. And Hovana Skabuzian, Alexei Serana, and Var Akobian round out the A group. Uh, and why don't you check out what's going on in the B group? Uh, the B group actually has two leaders at the moment. That is Sergei Azarov and Alexei Sorokin. Who are actually playing each other, which is really yes. nice. <laughs> so that'll be a, an exciting one to, to look out for today. The two leaders facing off here in round six. Uh, Melikachian, Federico Perez Ponsa, Emilio Cordova, and Tigran Haruchunian are all on three and a half points out of six. Yeah, so. and uh, Harutunian yesterday got uh, really lucky. Yeah. His opponent just blundered the rook. The young Christopher Yu just uh, unexplainable, just dropped the rook and must have been really tough. So Tigran got, <laughs> got his luck yeah, yesterday so, and just uh, uh, every very good, close Every to good tournament has a couple of rounds where, of course, sure. you, uh, you, you caught a lucky break. But uh, definitely uh, six players very much in contention to take home the, the first place prize here in the B group. Everything is still possible. And why don't we check out the format for this tournament and uh, see what's going on there. We have two 10-player round robins. Of course, that's the A group and the B group. The time control for the event is 90 minutes for 40 moves, and then 30 minutes are added on for the remainder of the game. There's also a 30-second increment starting on move one. And in addition to that, there is a draw rule in effect. Uh, so the players are not allowed to agree to a draw until Black makes his 30th move. And the schedule for the events is 1 p.m. every day uh, for the rounds, barring that final day, Monday, November 8th, just a couple days away now. Uh, the round will be starting two hours early, as will our show. So be sure to tune in at 1.30 on Monday for our show, and as always, 3.30 p.m. for today and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that in mind, uh, we'd like to thank you guys for, for joining us here on YouTube. Uh, I see a lot of you in the chat already. Friar Tuck, all the way coming in from uh, New Zealand. Haiyan Zhao uh, is asking us for, for our picks. Um, what, <laughs> for our I don't picks. know. I think uh, Renat Jumabayev is, is the, the, you know, the likely pick for the A group. 
and in the moment yeah for the moment <laughs> yes. yes but uh, I, I see a lot of these uh, young uh, American players who can catch up so I, I wouldn't just immediately say you know of course I I, I mean I would root for one of the three uh, Daniel Narodisky Sam Savian or or um, Jeffrey Shong, I'm not yeah, sure all, all <laughs> which one of them, but <laughs> <laughs> all three kind of part of this this next generation uh, yes. of super strong American chess players. Uh, be on, definitely be on the lookout for them. Um, if you want to get involved on Twitter as well, you can use the hashtag Winter Chess Classic. And as always, you can follow the games for yourself on uschesschamps.com to see what's going on there. Pick your, pick your favorite games, follow along with the engine, see if we're spouting nonsense or if what we're saying is actually true, and uh, get involved that way. Well, Sabina. I think that's about it. Uh, why don't we check out the pairings in the A group? We have Daniel Naroditsky, who has already drawn his game against Sefu. Barakobian is paired against Grigory Oberyn. The leader, Renat Jumabayev, uh, faces one of those uh, second place people, uh, Sam Sebian. Victor Erdos is against Jeffrey Zhang. And in our key matchup of the day, we're actually going to be looking at this game between Alexis Serrana and Hovana Skabuzian, where some very interesting developments have mm -hmm. already taken place. And uh, we can see on the screen, Skabuzian does not seem very happy. I keep yes. saying that. <laughs> I feel so bad. I keep saying, oh, <laughs> you know, yeah, they're not happy. But there, there, there's obviously some more expressive chess players than others. But, that is uh, true, I, yeah. I think all chess players show it in some way when they've got a terrible position and they're, maybe, they're suffering a bit. Maybe, maybe a little bit, yeah. Some, some people have uh, a better way of uh, not showing it, but I believe most of us do in, <laughs> in a way or another. So if you stand study facial expressions of chess players, for sure you would not be sorry. You would have a lot to, to try to guess from that. But so, so what's going on here? Uh, let's look at the position. I mean, it's just seems like white should be really close to winning. White's last move was f5. So f6, of course, is almost an unstoppable threat. I of think course. the only way to deal with it is to There's actually take on f5. Which I believe that just happened. <coughs> um, and the problem that black has is the lack of space. Okay, they also had a pawn down. Now white just gave it back by playing f5. But this pawn is going to be falling. And let's just look at black's pawn structure. I should it's have made it with disaster. red. <laughs> but it's disastrous, yes. I mean, no, every single pawn is an island. And that's something you try to avoid. I mean, look at those pawns. Six pawns, weak. Yeah, you know. no, the, there's, it, there's no way that, that black can hold all of this together. I, I think maybe just like knight g3 from white. It is very simple. It attacks both of those weak pawns, and probably both will fall. For sure, they will fall, and um, it's definitely very unpleasant for black. They don't have space. Their bishop in g7 is also restricted by their own pawn. It never got to be really opened. Um, the knight in f8 is not doing so great. Maybe black could try some way to improve the position of a knight, but even if you get with the knight to e5, it's not going to be enough, really, because yeah, your de king definitely is, not. The king uh, is so weak. And and especially once this h pawn falls, uh, you'll see those mm -hmm. those rooks for white on h1 and g1. Uh, kind of, you know, th they seem worse than the rooks on the e file, right? Yeah. But once that h pawn falls and white starts pushing the h and g pawns, yeah. they will be perfectly placed to attack the, the black. For king. sure, for sure. I mean, those are, I think they are really greatly placed. There's ideas with g6 also for white and try to, yes. to open up uh, the g file. And if you play f6, then your bishop will be completely closed. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and I so believe yeah. with. Alexi's choice is actually knight f6, I believe. And actually, I, maybe I like it better a little bit. Knight f6 instead of knight g3. Yeah, my <coughs> feeling was uh, knight f6 looks very attractive, but I didn't really want to give black even a chance to, to trade off such a horrible bishop. But uh, if it opens the g file, it, it's honestly, it's, it's just checkmate. It's worth right? it. Yeah, just... yeah, definitely. If that file gets open, it's going to be really bad. And uh, I'm anticipating a resignation very soon from black. Yeah, not not much to be position. done here. No, I mean, you know, you don't want to give the bishop because that's the only protecting piece that you have. So if you do give it up, then you can capture. We have ideas, the queen to come over or on g2, going for g7. 
you will not be safe. Or even g5, you know, there are so many places white's queen can come to, and you really have no counterplay, no way to attack white's king. White's king is really safe, and yeah. unfortunately, yeah. looking Looking very good for Alexi. Um, well, why don't we check out what's going on uh, with the B group pairings, and uh, I think we might also actually have a, a result there. Um, Yes, yeah, and we that, do. that result being. Uh, we actually have two results there. I think we just had a result yeah. draw between Sorokin and Sergei Azarov, and I'm hoping we can get one of the players down here for yeah, an interview soon. Definitely. Uh, I think we're, we're, it's a work in progress. Yes. Um, of course, uh, for all of our pairings, we do see those two results there. Alexis Sorokin, uh, one of the leaders, has drawn the other leader, Sergei Azarov, so they both maintain their position uh, for the day at the top of the pack. But it does leave With the door open half. for mm -hmm. one of those other myriad of players to, to try to catch up. Yeah. So who's it going to be in the B group? Uh, Justin Wang is playing Sergei Ehrenberg. Uh, Emilio Cordova is playing Elshan Maradi Abadi. And Emilio is one of those players within striking distance. Uh, Christopher Yu has actually already drawn his game against Melik Kachian. And Federico Perez Ponsa is playing Tigran Haruchunian in our key matchup of the day. Uh, of course, both Federico and Tigran have uh, the ability to, to catch the leaders with a win today. So if that game is decisive, there will be a third person joining the top of the leaderboard. That's going to be interesting to see. And we actually have the position, the current position, and we can see the players battling it for trying to catch the leaders. Absolutely. This is the current position that we have. Um, what do you think? I, I really like white. Uh, yeah, white has this very nice uh, central space advantage with this, this pawn on e5. The bishop's very, very active, and most importantly, this knight on a2 is, is not ideally placed. In fact, no. it, it might come, come under fire pretty soon. It's um, pretty trapped. Uh, yes. I do want to say, though, yes. uh, I believe we do have Alexi Sorokin here uh, in for an interview. So Sounds I will great. Uh, step out of the, the chair for a moment and okay. let him get in here to talk about his tournament. Sounds great. All right, so this is the current position that we have in the game Perisponsa against Harutunian. So um, rook c8 was played and white immediately traded the rooks. I'm anticipating a rook capture, which just happened. And now black is going to, find, to try to find a way to escape with this knight from a2. It's going to be very, very tough. Whew, not quite sure how exactly we will trap it, but it's trapped for the moment, so nothing to be worried about. And I'm joined here by Alexei Sorokin, who just drew his game and maintained his lead in the uh, B, B group. Uh, how do you feel mm. being in this tournament so far, your performance? Yeah, so I need uh, one point more to get my uh, last GM, GM norm, norm, so I will try to do it. Okay. Uh, you you played. Uh, you had a pretty good tournament. We were hoping to get you here, talk to us earlier, but unfortunately, yeah, <laughs> it didn't so happen. Yeah. So one but. game that I won, I finished like in five hours. Yes, you played long second games. Second game, like in two hours. Yeah. Did you go today for thinking that you want to try to make a draw, or what was your? Uh, mindset going into today's round? I didn't expect uh, B6 in the opening. In the opening, okay. So, Rook C1. Rook C1 is pretty, pretty ty typical, right? Yes. For right in this position. Yes. Bishop B7. Yes. And this seems pretty, pretty logical. So, yes, I took, 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 a took and A3. C5. You played a3 to avoid bishop uh, bishop b4 yes. check, right? And usually black does not go for queen takes d5. Uh, oftentimes, I think they go for for the capture with the pawn, like yes, right? Um, maybe bishop f2, or bishop t c5 castle. And white is slightly better. But queen takes d5, um, it's a new new idea. I think probably maybe not too new, but maybe not new. And uh, now you're threatening to take in c7, so c5 seems kind of obvious. And then you're going into this position, which seems pretty, pretty yes, symmetrical uh, kind of. Equal. I thought that I have some chances to win in this position, but 
uh, at least I cannot lose really. So. Yeah, I mean, yes. <laughs> So you're going into the game, okay, a draw, at least a draw, no yes. losing, of course, yeah, of course you want to. Yeah, it's okay for me. So, uh, and uh, here bishop before, I mean usually white because of the, the way you have the pieces development, you should have a very tiny advantage, I think, but it's minimal probably. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you try your best, but if the opponent gets a good placement of the pieces, I think it's yeah, pretty yeah. balanced, right? Yes. Do you think there was any moment where you could have tried to... Not really. Uh, not really. <laughs> okay, it's bishop takes... Five, this is pretty forced. Yeah, bishop takes h7, kind of forced. You're getting the pawn, but then you kind of have to give it up very soon. Knight d3 check and... And uh, I think that knight b2 is also okay. Uh, what did you plan against this uh, move? Rook c1 maybe. Rook c1, maybe rook c6, or yes. c7. Uh, and rook c8 to b5. But rook c8, can't you just uh, trade eight, and take uh, f7? Uh, yes, but rook c2. Maybe, ah, knight d3 is coming next, mm -hmm. right? King, uh, mm, here, knight right? Knight d3, bishop g3, and... Maybe check knight even doesn't seem doesn't seem so safe for black. I think mm. I, I prefer white in this position. Maybe, yes. But knight takes a four, okay you, you yes. he messes and up your pawn structure. I think uh, I don't really have some chances to win uh, because of these three pawns on F line is so bad. And it looks like we have a result in uh, our key match of the day. Um, Gabuzian has just resigned against Sarana. So you, we might have Sarana coming, joining us a little bit later today. That was an interesting game <laughs> in the, uh, yeah, in the group. My game yeah. was not really interesting. Well, we, we haven't had you down here for an interview. We wanted to hear your thoughts about being here in San Luis. Is this... Uh, have you have you played in, in this yes, tournament before? Yes, uh, I played in uh, spring chess. In the spring, year. yes, and uh, I also had uh, four out of seven, and I was need like one point more in the last two games, but I lost two games. And you have to keep your you have to keep your calm, you yeah. know, <laughs> in the next <laughs> next uh, next two rounds and. Uh, um, tell us, uh, where do you live? Uh, do you now I live in Lubbock. You live Te in Lubbock, you went to Texas, Texas Tech Uni yes. University. How do you like it there? Uh, it's good. It's good? Yes. <laughs> I used to live there actually for three years. So yes, it's, no. uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting place to live. Do you, do you like being in the United States? Yes. Yes? I like it. Good, that's good. Thank we're, you. we're happy to have you here. Um, Thanks for, for joining us today, and uh, we wish you good luck in, in the remaining Thank two rounds. You. All right. So, we, we just um, finished our interview with Alexei Sorokin, and Alexei Sarana will be joining us in just a moment, um, I think. Let us just pull up the game and just look at the final position. So it seems like the last moment we were looking at knight of six in this position. Black tried to defend a little bit with knight g6, and of course white is not going for the rook. That's the least to expect in this position. You definitely want to go for the mate. Queen d1, very beautiful. And after knight f4, rook f1, black resigned. There's no way to uh, defend that pawn. And uh, Alexis Arana just joined me here. Welcome and congratulations. A uh, really you. nice game today. Yeah. Um, how do you feel? Yeah, um, good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Already good because. Very good. Uh, Were yeah. you? Uh, the previous part of tournament was very bad for me. So. So you're coming. You're coming back. I mean, the tournament is very long. I mean, yeah. now only two more rounds after today. So. Yeah. Um, 
tell us about the opening. Did you expect uh, yeah, of course, this line he, he all the way to? Yeah, of course, he plays only the mm -hmm. so what, uh, what was the moment where your preparation? Uh, he he yeah. played uh, after knight d5, he played b. Knight, knight take d, takes d5, now he played bishop d5. So that was his main main approach, he okay? His main, but uh, bishop d5 is more famous move and more, more strong. <laughs> Much so stronger, okay. okay. Yes. But uh, this is I think white is white seems to be a little bit better very soon. I'm I wasn't sure where he, yeah, he made so a mistake, he, right? Uh, yes, this is all theory. So I I didn't sure about rook c8. So maybe rook c8. This is not theoretical move. So black black usually plays knight, knight b6, king b1, knight b take takes d5. Bishop g5 and here long Tigris. So bishop e7 or? Uh, no, I don't, I don't yeah, know bishop this one. Bishop e7, yes. Bishop. So c4, there are a lot of theories. Mm -hmm. so, okay. so he tried so to he kind tried of to change something. Yes, I mean, okay. at some point you have to make some changes. Yes. It's okay. So here you are out of uh, you are out of theory, yes, but yes. you're still. But okay. I also d d didn't believe that he also know he plays fast, but uh, I thought that it it, wo it wasn't. It was not good. Good. It yeah. wasn't preparation, so it maybe it wasn't good. So okay. Bishop. So King B one seems very natural. Try to get out from the C file, mm -hmm. just making sure yes, looks, looks King is safe. And you have to finish your development, but g4 is definitely something yeah, that's course. coming here. I mean, h5 doesn't seem to be <laughs> really helping. <laughs> Queen c7 and uh, c4. And in this position, were you ever worried that black was going to be able to play some b5? S at some point, I think that's what he should try to do, no? Yeah, maybe. But it's not b6, possible. Uh, but okay. b6 doesn't seem so good, right? Yes, but uh, maybe he, he, he should play in this position b6 because I have a lot of, if he plays, I don't see what instead of What to B6, play instead yes. of that, okay. Yeah, ideas with b5, but... Uh, it's not so easy. Not I so mean. easy, yes. If, if here b5 I just take and... With yeah, it's with a free pawn. I think you just pawn, take yes. it, right? If he goes to, if he goes castle, so... Just g4, g4 directly. and very dangerous position. So, can Black ever just decide to go maybe for maybe for here h4? Uh, h4. So maybe much. I can play h4. h4 first and h4 then g4. First and then g4. Yes. Okay. So maybe he can just move his rook to b8 and try to go for b5 and then. Okay, maybe maybe rook c1. Okay. Ah, okay. <laughs> so That's true. Your knight in b3 is is pretty good. Yes. Uh, because you are. You're just stopping queen a5, the queen cannot be improved, mm -hmm. a, and a5 also, maybe you just take yes, the pawn. Yes, position looks very, very, already very, very good, tough. So, so maybe ideas with rook c8 and queen c7. was not those. such a great idea. Yes. And then uh, you just got, had a really great attack here after g4. Yes. So we did not so really understand <laughs> this move. <laughs> yes, I also didn't understand. So okay. <laughs> right. uh, okay. If, if Trying uh, some a5 and Not so easy to find what to do with black, so position already bad, but... Yeah, but this move, uh, it's not so clear what uh, what he was trying to do, I think. Okay, uh, even... What do you think about maybe just going maybe for a5, a5 directly? Yes, uh, Would you still... Like yes, go queen c2. Okay, and then a4. Ah, you mm -hmm. can take the pawn. Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, Seems to be very difficult. Maybe this queen does not belong in c7 anymore. I should maybe move it here. Queen c7. Yes, but maybe in this reduction. You have some ideas like that at some point. Oh. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a d4 player, so yes. I just try to guess. I, I don't <laughs> guess think so. <laughs> no, it's too much. It's yes, too much. But, but yeah, if but you okay, play g5. But okay, maybe after g5, yeah. bishop. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe even. Okay. Yes. Interesting. But rook a8, yeah, that didn't seem... Looks didn't very seem. strange, yes. And, and then it seemed kind of effortless for you from here on. Yes, I play, play it uh, Just very, very natural moves yeah. and uh, get a uh, winning And black, position. yeah. Black so, okay, f4 and the... 
here I just go night C1, night E2, night B4, night C3, so, so we, mm -hmm. I have, <laughs> have so easy game. Yeah, this, this, this knight can be improved that way, and then there's no plan for black. This is the big problem, because he never get, got B5, he never got to attack you on the king's side. Yes, yes. And so then... And even after rook C8, knight E2. Okay, mm -hmm. here knight C3, okay, I also saw knight before, but queen okay, maybe here after queen d1 him sh should take on e2. Just take your bishop, probably you take the queen, right? Yeah, yes, and s something like a castle. Uh, castle, or I don't know, maybe here. Were you playing some bishop g5? Which maybe take on b6, may maybe bishop g5, yes, but. To, to try to take, take, and open up, maybe, no? Knight yes, four, also. something like that. Also looks very bad, yeah. Maybe. But I but see, I can see that you want to take these pawns. You're not scared. A lot of yes. people are very scared to go take, you know, pawns on the other side of the board <laughs> where they open your king, but okay. you, you took the a4 pawn, you didn't. But You're not worried. <laughs> uh, here, yeah, here, if you here, don't here, see something, has, hasn't yeah. any attack. So That's I true. also thought instead queen d1, uh, queen take, bishop take on d4 and take on f4, but he yeah, he but, but take on f4, but he here after queen a7, I Your knight is, knight is very bad. Bad, so yeah. So maybe and you're letting him maybe get this bishop up and you try yes, to avoid that. Yes, of course, here he has a good compensation. Maybe also he is slightly worse, but... Yeah. He has just uh, some counterplay. So queen d1, very interesting like move. You're saying, okay, take my light square bishop. I don't yes. care so much about that one. I think this bishop is probably better to keep a little yeah. bit longer. And then you got that very beautiful finish there. Okay, you after just a castle, bishop d3, one moment. I saw that he, he, he should play b5 or mm -hmm. just resign. So b5. Uh, over here? Yes. Can you take it? Or what did you plan to do after yes. b5? After b5, I thought if, if I take c, take b5, he has rook take c3, Ooh, and knight take d5. No, ah, d5. 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 Yeah. So he is in a very dangerous position even for white, so I non okay, didn't you can, take I mean, on b5 his You can spot. let him take, maybe, no? Maybe. But, uh, okay, I s if I play bishop takes d4, he played b takes c4, important move. Yes, no, no, he, no? <laughs> he maybe I already... You have to think. Very bad position, yes, he is. So <laughs> you have to take your time yes. after b5. After b5, I, I thought that I will play g5, mm -hmm. of course, b and here he should play knight mm, e8, so or yes, knight e8, and here just take a pawn with this knight. Uh -huh. Knight, knight take b5, c take b5, and knight c7, uh, queen take f5, f4, knight takes d5, and bishop d4, d2. Sorry, and this should be a better position. Should, should be a better, but uh, it's playable, really, yeah, yes. Yeah, so he, it seemed like he, he didn't really find the right moment to mm -hmm. break into the position, and then your play was, was really pretty yes. good. After uh, rook f8, what, what yeah, happened in the Yeah, just g5, g5, okay. yeah. Yeah, we saw this final part. Uh, we're discussing this final part. It's kind of easy for you now. You just push the f pawn and, yes. and the position of black's position collapses. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for joining us and going into, you. into your uh, thoughts for today's game. Um, two more rounds. How are your feelings about the last two rounds? I Feeling confident? Yes. After the win today? Yes. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and I uh, wish you good luck in the last two rounds. Thank you very much. All right. So that was Alexei Saran after a very beautiful win against Gabuzian of Hannes. And we should go check this game out between Viktor Erdos and Jeffrey Shong. I think this is a very interesting position. Um, that we can try to evaluate as Caleb is j getting ready to join me back into the show. So, wow, look at this position. Black has 
I think a winning, a winning position. What do you think, Caleb? Well, uh, let's see. I'm counting the pawns. One, two, three, <laughs> four. All right, black has more pawns. Black has more pawns. Um, but and most importantly, uh, the, the white king is, is kind of getting wrecked here. Uh, um. It's very tough. This knight is close by. And uh, let's not forget about, you know, the queen and the rook, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Those <definitely>. pieces. <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah. Wait, wait a second. Yeah, this man is going to say. I was counting the pawns. Yeah, I know, <laughs> you forgot about the major pieces. Okay. <laughs> um, so queen and rook for two rooks and bishop. Uh, who, so I guess we can just say queen for rook and bishop yeah, and the pawn. Is, and uh, this should be really amazing for, for Jeffrey. If he wins this game and he's really close to winning, he just played actually queen f6 in this position. We are going to see him join, well, catch up with the leader for the moment. That game uh, is still going on. Yeah, of course. Uh, Renat, uh, not looking like he's in too much danger actually yet today. So yeah. he, he might keep his lead by a half point. But Jeffrey, uh, being uh, very professional, you know, it's tough to keep these 2,700 players down. Uh, they, they lose one game, and what they do is they come back and they win the next three. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> they don't give up. No. There's no moment where they would say, oh, no, I lost. How terrible I played. I have no more chances. No, not at all. They are really determined to come back in the tournament. And even if they might say some negative things, those are just temporary. I've done it myself. Um, you are really focused yes. and back into the game immediately. Definitely. After. Jeffrey wants to win this tournament. I am uh, sure. No, he, no doubt about he, it. He wants that for sure. And... Uh, he has the material advantage, he has the, the right position, attacking white. Um, so this could be a really good, come, like an amazing comeback for Jeffrey. And uh, we, you know, yeah, he absolutely. doesn't stop. Um, it, it'll certainly make things more interesting these past two two rounds if uh, Renat is uh, under a little bit of pressure. Of uh, course. To, to win some games to keep that leading Yeah, uh, I mean. Spot. One point is not as much, considering there's three more rounds, right? So you have one point difference, but you still have to maintain that. If you know, if you lose one game, then someone can catch up with you. So you really want to try to continue playing good chess, of course, and um, always be on the look for the competitors. Yes. <laughs> well, so expecting Jeffrey to be able to pull this one out. Uh, why don't we actually take a look at our key matchup in B? I don't believe Let's we've actually seen no, that, that game. No, we did yet. not do that. Uh, we, of course, have Federico Ponza against Tigran uh, Haru Chunin. Ch Chunin. Uh, of course, both of these players just a half point out of the lead going into today. And now that the leaders have officially drawn in the B group, if this game is decisive, there will be someone joining those leaders at yes. four and a half points out of seven. And so why don't we see what's going on over uh, over the board here? Okay, so this is the current position that we have, and uh, a few changes have happened since we last looked at the position. It actually happened as I was uh, getting ready to um, start the interviews, and I think in this position, black is still a little bit worse, but he was able to escape with his knight, remember? Yeah, uh, white still has uh, a very powerful bishop, and uh, this a6 pawn looks backwards, but black's pieces have gotten active. This knight has improved. I mean, let, yes. if we go back into this position, right, where the knight was back in a2, and it looked like there's no way this knight was going to, to get active in any way, it seems like after a few moves, Black was able to bring it to d3. How did that happen? Yeah, queen, queen c4. c4. He just puts it on c1, I suppose. Wow. OK, I did not think of that idea. Of course, we didn't have that much time to discuss this, ga this game. But knight to c1, wow. OK, that's, that's, a very nice, that's a very nice comeback into the game. Uh, yeah, you, don't, you don't often use the, the eighth rank to, no. uh, to, to transfer your pieces onto good outposts. Yeah, but this is a very nice idea. Queen c4 and knight c1, and now that knight comes back into the game, and rook a1 putting pressure on a6, and black responds with queen to e4. Let's get rid of that arrow. We do not need it at this point. <laughs> it's tough. Uh, so can white take on a6? Uh, it, it doesn't look very good to me, honestly. I, I do not believe white can capture here. Uh, I'm anticipating there's, check. There's a check, and there's also some e-pawn business to look out for, but 
I'm not sure. There's we cannot we cannot capture just yet. Maybe maybe uh, Black should have just captured the epon uh, instead. Um, yeah, and Jeffrey's game is officially over. He has won his game against Victor Erdos in the A group. So he moves to a score of four and a half out of seven. Uh, for the moment, tied with Renat and Jumabayev. Of course, Renat's game has not finished yet. So if Renat manages even just a draw, he, he keeps uh, keeps the lead for mm -hmm. today. And, uh, and maybe we we'll be have able to the get... camera on that game a little bit. Yes. <sighs> Maybe we'll be able to get Jeffrey down here, actually, in just a few minutes for an interview. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting to, to get his thoughts on uh, that, that psychology aspect of it. Of uh, how do you back. go from, from losing a game to uh, coming back, winning with the black pieces in, in the next round? It's, it's very impressive stuff. And um, we are still looking at this game a little bit. <laughs> King, King I think so I think this Knight of Four would have been in my opinion, the move four looks, no? looks dangerous. Looks a little bit dangerous uh, because now if you oh, but maybe you can play f three. Maybe it's not as dangerous as I was hoping. Uh, I, maybe maybe Black could just take on e five after rook takes a six. Yeah, I'm not sure. And instead of rook c one. Oh oh okay yeah. Knight takes e five. Pawn for a pawn. If there's no follow up for white, yeah, that should work. And now we might bring the knight to c4, and I think things look okay for black. Mm -hmm. So uh, Federico actually chose queen e3 in the game, I think, rather than rook takes yeah, a6. Yeah, he went for queen e3. So he was like, no, I don't, I don't want to give up my central pawn for this backwards pawn, which anyways, yes. it's a long-term weakness. So he offers up this queen trade, uh, hoping to, to simplify a bit. But I do believe we have Jeffrey Zhang here in for uh, another interview. So Sounds I will great. Step out of my chair once again. All right. So, um, Queen E3 in this position. And wow. Uh, well, obviously, the Queen trade would not be such a great idea, I think, for Black, because this Knight, once again, will find itself kind of trapped in White's territory, at least temporary. And that pawn is still a weakness. But maybe, maybe it's fine. If we do not trade the queens in this position, I don't know. Queen e3, very interesting. But I have Jeffrey Shong joining me after a very beautiful win today and a comeback after a tough loss yesterday. Congratulations, Jeffrey. Thank you. Uh, nice comeback. Uh, everyone here today wanted to um, hear your thoughts about what did you do what do you do after a tough loss? How do you come back into the, you know, the new day, focusing on your goals and um, you know, winning with black pieces? What do you need to do, or what did you do? Uh, well, I'm not really the guy who gets too upset after losing. Um, losses are inevitable, so you just have to um, figure out a way to move on and focus on the next game. I, I totally agree with you. I think it's, you know, you. I, I'm surprised to hear you don't get upset. I, I get very upset when I lose. Of course, uh, I, I know it's a learning experience, but sometimes you just feel like you're so mad at yourself for, for having missed, missed things. Um, so you went into today's game relaxed and ready to just, I mean, not relaxed, but like ready to, uh, for a fight, right? Exactly. Were you, um, was this preparation, the opening that you played? Yeah, I, I mean, I prepared this B5 system, but I didn't really check it uh, before the game, so. Okay. Uh, it's very wild, and I wasn't sure if I remembered uh, the line correctly. So, okay. yeah, this is uh, knight B5, knight B6. This is all normal so far. Bishops, and, yeah, queen D2 is kind of, okay, but, uh, nice. so queen D2 is a uh, popular idea to try to bring the queen via, uh, via f4, g3, and harass the g7? king side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bishop h6, maybe. Right, so uh, that's why black uh, usually goes for this idea with bishop b7. Rook d1. Uh, I was surprised that he started with rook d1, because usually they play queen f4. Mm -hmm. And we could get something similar like queen d7, queen g3, g5, something similar to the game where I like to castle long and it's a race uh, who, who gets who gets first to the yeah. other other size king 
so he went for rook d1 first and so this was something that you had prepared before no at, this or? i'm not sure uh i'm not i wasn't sure about this move order i was a little bit surprised about when you played g5 um for giving giving up the pawn of course it, it's a very beautiful idea opening up the g file but mm -hmm. um yeah, I'm not actually sure if this was correct or not, because uh, there's an idea, let's say, if you go back a few moves. Yes, of course. Uh, let's say bishop b7, queen f4, queen d7, queen g3, g5. Uh, and there's knight g5, bishop g5, queen g5, knight e7. There's a game like this. But here black is winning, uh, but compared to the game, he has rook on d1. Because you're going to go for something like that, or maybe this rook, right? Yeah, well, b5, queen knight d5. is in. Ah, uh, yeah, Georgia. of course. Oh, sorry. Uh, so I win the piece. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't sure about the version in the game because with the rook on d1, he had d5. Uh huh. So after after capturing everything? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So you're thinking knight e7? Yeah, this Now d5, like it happened in the game. All and right. I can't take the knight because d6 and my king is. I'll, uh, d6. Ah, d6. Yeah. And I, I'll probably be made it here in Yeah, bishop h5. Does not seem very fun. Okay. So I had to take on d5. And now I thought this was critical if whether or not he could take on c4. This I wasn't sure. And after rook g8, now maybe, I, mm -hmm. I don't know where to move this queen. Probably have to protect d1. So maybe h5? queen h5. And this was the critical uh, position. Let's say keeps the pressure. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I have either queen six or long castle. I don't think I can take on g two here because your queen could be. My queen is hanging there. Can we yeah. take? Knight. Yeah, this if knight of four, king f one. I think the end game is not because the rook is protected. So that's going to. Yeah, I can take on h five. It will be even material, but the end game looks good for him. The knight on h five is bad. Let's bishop. G5 and white has the pair of bishops yeah. too. So. Okay, so maybe... But queen c6 instead was interesting. Um, now, this is probably what he wasn't sure about. Bishop f1, let's say. Seems to be the only move to protect g2, I mean... The good news is, I don't think I can make a discovery with my knight. For example, knight f4, knight e3. He can take on c7 here. Oh, nice intermediate move, because you cannot right. go king f8, probably. But if I take with queen bishop f4, yeah, yeah. I'm just down a pawn. Yeah, that's. Can I so. try king f8? Let's see. Queen h6, rook g7. Ah, but I'm pinned, so he just picks up the knight. Yeah, and you don't have. Or wait, have let's to. see. So right? knight f5. Do I have this move? Much. Like, can I take an e6? Could be possible. You can. Also, maybe taking on a8 is very simple. Uh, because it's a lot of right material now? already. Yeah, knight h6, bishop h6. So yeah. much material. Because you're still pinned. Yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. Otherwise, you would you would take g2. That's why I don't think queen c6 uh, works. Because also, he will get tempos later, like with knight d4, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, to just get the knight out of the hanging place position yeah. and just get it in a better position. So here, maybe long castle. But I'm not sure I believe, because now he has bishop g5, uh, closing the g file and developing. Mm. I mean, at some point, maybe you'll be able to, to push some h6 to chase that bishop away, maybe. Yeah, maybe like king b8 to prepare something, but I have a feeling that if he can get away with this, he'll be just better, because... But for sure, it's a very complicated yeah. and interesting position. It requires... Mm -hmm. Quite some analysis. I think if you go into the game without having really seen these ideas, it's not really so easy for White to Definitely. to decide to go for this uh, this pawn in c4. So just go for a4. But now I think when I keep this pawn in, I still have this attack. So yeah, rook g8. rook g8 seems nice. And now you just chase the knight away, mm -hmm. and you have the queen d7, so he doesn't come back with <laughs> tempo. And now it doesn't seem like White can get uh, easily an attack on your king. Exactly, yeah. I thought at this point it's very difficult. Um, so you play, he played f3 Yeah, here. f3 was logical to uh, just block the bishop, yeah. 
but that sometimes can be actually a target too. Considering yeah, the um, Maybe. I try to take advantage of knight g6. g6. But okay, the critical was bishop c4. I think uh, is okay, but after c5, he needed to go to e2. Uh, with the point being, he wants to put it on g3 to block the g5. Mm -hmm. and at least no tricks uh, like in the game. And um. I wasn't sure what I have here because. Probably he was afraid of knight e5, but after bishop d5, I'm not sure how good this is uh, for me. So I'm assuming you do not really want the end game. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Let, I mean, bishop d5, let's say knight g3. Is this, I really want to make this sacrifice. What about h5? Yeah, h5 is natural. Um, now... Either, because my king is also a little bit loose, right? So yeah, he has a lot of double attack ideas. Queen e3, queen e2 to hit the mm -hmm. knight and the pawn. Or maybe queen a5 also. Maybe. Queen a5. Yeah, also it might through. allow some sacrifices finally in f3, maybe not. But yeah, here queen e3, for example, looks unclear. Okay, I can cover with queen c7. So actually, maybe queen. Um, maybe queen e2. Maybe queen e2, but then. That seems to me. Seems to me that's just a check. So if mm -hmm. I move my queen, then you can go maybe bishop b7. So I wonder if we could just do the same thing. But but now the queen is in e2. Maybe bishop f4 will be possible. Just yes. keeping the bishop if open. Queen c7, yeah. So very interesting. Yeah, I really wasn't sure if maybe the end game is a safer way because here I don't even know if I'm better. Yeah, yeah I you have to stay, spend some time calculating yeah. this position. It's a good, good exercise. But maybe you can trade and uh, he will take take maybe rook takes if uh, uh, whatever. I mean, if rook d five, he will take knight g three. If bishop d five, knight g three. Yeah. yeah uh, the question is, do you want the rooks on the board or not? That's mm -hmm. <laughs> that's something you have to. To figure out and but yeah after knight three it doesn't look that bad for me. Maybe you could still go for h5, h4 here now that no queens are on the board. Yeah, it's uh, an option. Yeah. Trying to go for f3. I but should still be slightly better, but it's uh, definitely a game. Mm -hmm. But uh, after after knight c2, just seems like uh, white is just going to be struggling, and you you just win this beautiful with this beautiful tactic. You win his queen, and after that. Is there any more chance that White had? In the uh, not position? not when he gives up the queen, but I thought he I would have tried um, queen d3 instead of knight e1. Knight e1, so after knight e1, queen d3. Rook g2, king, king somewhere, yeah, h1. But um, ah, the problem with king h1 was I can take on f3 here. Um, okay, queen f3, rook c2, so you ah. should take my rook. Yeah. Takes your rook. And then now simply knight e5 and looks. Looks very yeah. dangerous for white. Discovery, everything's kind of hanging. G file. So that's why you probably have to go to f1, but it sh uh, should be completely lost after uh, queen c6, among other things. Uh, Maybe. Threatening knight e3. Yeah. Ah, okay. I'm more into bringing more pieces. <laughs> No, yeah, I, I like queen c6 yeah. very much. Rook g8, everything. This king is just uh, out in the open. It doesn't seem like. All right, and then yeah, after that, uh, I think after you win the queen, it's just uh, game over, pretty yeah. much, right? So, um, how do you feel in this moment about your chances to to try to win the tournament? Oh uh, yeah, I'm definitely uh, pleased, of course, with uh, this result. It's very important, I guess. And tomorrow I'll have white against Var, who. Uh, I generally struggle with, so <laughs> hopefully it's gonna be a we'll tough, go yeah. tough game. But uh, very beautiful comeback. Thanks for sharing your thoughts on how, you know, you should try to take uh, to enjoy the game of chess. Even if you lose, just learn from it and move forward, because you're gonna lose anyway sometimes. But you have to take the learning experience and. Yeah, very true. All right, thank you so much for joining us today, and uh, good luck in the next two rounds. Thank you. All right. So we have 
we've had a very nice interview with Jeffrey. What a beautiful game and so complicated, I think. And we have on the screen Varakovian uh, playing against Oparin. And I'm going to pull up that game right now. Var has an extra pawn in a rook end game. These usually you are taught that this rook end games should be draws, but what do we have here that's different than in those um, end games that? You're told that they should be a draw. The fact that black has this pawn pushed in f5. Caleb, Ooh. just join me. Um, right back. Yes. <laughs> and um, we have this f5 pawn pushed. And we're usually told you should keep the pawns f7, g6, h5 to make it very difficult for white right. to try to improve the position. But here, the question is, is that move going to... Hmm give white some chances to win. I, uh, I think yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, you're going to say no? <laughs> I think chess is a draw. But uh, so what's the winning plan for it for white then? You try to invade with the king? You or, try or to which, bring the king. Which pawns do you push? Well, the thing is, because that pawn is pushed, white does not need to trade all of their pawns. That's right. the, the difference. So now. So if you put the king on g5, you, you win, basically. If you do, of course, black might try to get their rook and just checkmate you there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if possible, of course. It's not going to be easy to do that. But I think uh, what, you, you, what you have to try to do, in my opinion, is try to get your king all the way to f4, then maybe do f3, e4, create a pass pawn, and try to you know, just push it a little bit. Right. King g5 afterwards, try to get the g6 pawn if you can. Okay. The idea is to try to trade as least a little amount of pawns as possible. Definitely. Should still be a draw, but I think <laughs> white, white has more, more ch chances than when the pawn is in, in f7. So if, if you're defending with black here, I guess you just put your rook on the fourth rank to try and uh, you know, prevent this king f4 idea for as long as possible. But uh, then I guess white might try like rook d4, for example. Well, to, the to keep. yes, so you cannot really hold on to that fourth rank. If mm -hmm. white wants to prepare to play e4, it's in their territory. They should be able to do it. Right. They put the rook in d4, like you say, or as you move your rook maybe to a7, trying to get it on fourth rank, then we'll put our rook in b4, get our king to f4. You know, yes. it doesn't matter. <laughs> the rook, I think, doesn't need to stay in b on the sixth rank um, all the time, but we certainly have a lot of... Um, better improvement ideas than if the pawn were to be in f7. So yeah. that remains to be um, seen, um, how this uh, game will plan, plan out. But uh, I know for sure after having had a tough tournament, VAR is not going to let this go. He's oh, going to try not, his yeah. best to get as much as possible from the position. And um, we should expect a long game. Yeah, we'll see what VAR can pull off here uh, in his game against uh, Grigori Oberyn. Um, I feel like we should check in on uh, our leader's game in the A group, Renat Jumabayev against Sam Sevian. Uh, looks to be a, a pretty interesting position, actually. Whoa. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh. Black has more rooks. White has more knights. <laughs> But uh, what's going on here? There's a, a, a really key d5 square, and black's king side has been kind of shattered. So uh, definite compensation for Renat here. That's true. I mean, this knight could you know, have that outpost. I mean, and c6 is not so easy to play for black, because if they do, then they weaken their d6 pawn. Of course. They're going to lose it on the spot. Black does have a lot of weaknesses in this position. Um, so uh, 95 seems like a very serious threat, actually. Um, if this so lands let's on go six, back. All right, so this is what this. happens. So white just left <laughs> that rook there. I mean, yes. it's been it's been uh, it's been a while. I mean, it was a really long thought line, probably. So this so yeah, is knight kicks f4. I think is when white committed to to this idea. Probably, and now they do, they did not go for this pawn in f4, but they chose to give up the. Well, they cannot because the knight is hanging. What am I talking yes. about? Um, so they decided to go for this idea, messing up black pawn structure, and then bishop d4, and it seems like white was okay to sacrifice the exchange. Uh, yeah, I, I think this is a very sound exchange sacrifice, and white has a lot of uh, uh, a lot of compensation. Uh, I think Justin Wang has actually drawn his game against Sergei Ehrenberg here in the B group. 
And uh, we haven't heard from Serika yet, so, yeah, maybe, so we'll, maybe we'll get him in for, for a quick interview. Sure, that would be that would be good. I mean, we should try to get every every one of these players. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they have fans watching their games uh, yeah, of course. live, maybe following us, mm -hmm. hopefully. And so it would be nice to um, try to hear from as many of these players as possible. Yeah, and it looks like this was the final position here. Uh, just a night end game, no path in for for either king and. Uh, that, that makes it agreed. a draw. They agreed on a draw. Yeah. Uh, we haven't really looked at this game, so if we're going to get Sergei here, maybe we can ask his thoughts about the key moments. Yeah, of course. Um, of the game. And, uh, yeah. Um, anything yeah. else interesting, uh, in your opinion, we should go for? Maybe we should actually check in on the game between Emilio Cordova and Alshan. Yeah, uh, we have not looked at that game. And it looks as though uh, more end games today. Uh, in That's the good. Classic. <laughs> and we want attacking games, but we also want some end games because yes, you can learn uh, from both. That's that's where some of these players are are, are really truly more skilled than, than some of those those other uh, like international masters, for example. I think the end game prowess is, is a huge difference between these these you know twenty six hundred level grandmasters mm -hmm. and uh, even twenty five hundred level grandmasters. That's uh, that's for sure, and we have a rook and knight endgame, and um, white just reached move forty. So yeah, white will be be taking his time from here on out. Uh, and uh, Alshon actually has a, a decision to make, right? Uh, there's some some pressure against this e5 pawn. Uh, d4 is hanging, but probably that's that's mm, not a yeah, pawn you want to no, take. No, you don't really want to do that. You're yes. going to destroy your pawns unfortunately and then this knight comes in and of would course. be kind of unpleasant in my opinion but um, now he's on move 40 right so he has five minutes left um, I think we should tell our viewers it's important if you want if you're going to play a game and you're reaching move 40 like really that's your last move and you still have time on the clock and you feel that it's a, an important moment don't let don't uh, play the move instantaneously. Make <laughs> sure you spend as much of your time as possible. Right. Don't lose on time, God forbid. But you know, like, uh, it's like you have 35 minutes, right? Uh, all you yeah. have to do is make one final decision, and uh, you can spend up to your last seconds uh, making yeah. that decision. Yeah, you should definitely do that, and uh, and try to make sure you get the best. Uh, the best possible move that you find and don't right. let yourself be pressed too much with the time like don't keep looking at it oh my god I'm going <laughs> down on time no if, if you spent all your time thinking about your time <laughs> you haven't really spent it wisely yeah you didn't uh, you basically didn't do anything so you need to make sure it looks like Elshan might actually be under a little bit of pressure here there um, is for sure some pressure you really want to play king f5 but your knight is hanging and you want yeah, to improve your knight but there's some struggle to coordinate the black pieces you know that the knight is tied to the e-pawn, the king is tied to the knight, <laughs> so uh, it's almost like nothing can really move. Uh, that made me think that maybe rook e6 might, might be a move for black. Uh, just simply trying to overprotect this pawn so that we can move our knight, we can go to h6, we can go to f5 and, and start attacking some of these, these white weaknesses. The only thing I would not like about that move is the fact that you're staying on this fork, of course, if you're not course, planning yeah. to ever take in d4, it doesn't matter, but you should try to keep your pieces a little bit, um, you know, not on, on tactical patterns. Also, maybe d5 is a pawn that we actually should take care of, not e5, but I might be wrong. Uh, yeah, so so I was, rook, rook uh, e6, I wasn't sure how you were going to attack my, my d5 pawn, maybe rook c5 or something? Uh, maybe rook d7? Uh, well, with rook d7, wrong? then I think knight d6 is is a good move. I just want to bring this knight to f5, and if you start taking my pawns, I can I can start capturing some of yours. Interesting, interesting idea. Um, you know, of, of course, is, always yeah. as the defender, the, the more pawns that get taken off the board, the, the closer to a draw you are. Actually, um, what do you think about this move? Yeah, this move kind of caught my eye, but I thought. E4 should be possible. If F5, I can I can okay. take, and I'm not getting forced. No, not going I hope. To, yeah. Uh, and my what knight is hanging, this? but ah, uh, maybe this is this is a, a problem. 
Yeah, I guess I might be losing uh, losing some material here. Yeah, I don't think the rook belongs to the rook should go to e6. Probably here. Um, well, how can I improve my knight then? Uh, that, that's, uh, that's my question. It doesn't seem to be difficult. such an easy such an easy task. Um, maybe you just let it there for some time. Maybe try to go for. Hmm. Not sure. Yeah, is this the type of position you can just just sit on? Uh, is is a question. But uh, you know, always as as when you're defending, you're, you're tempted to find some active way to play, right? Mm -hmm. Even if it means giving up some some pawn or something, uh, you want your pieces to be active. And right now, uh, for Elshon, all the all his pieces are defending. You know, this knight's on f7. This king's defending the knight. The knight's defending the pawn, and so he has actually like... gone for e takes d4. Uh, very interesting idea. So he, he does take this d-pawn, allows this knight f4 check, if white so desires. But uh, at least now, maybe his pieces are, are a little bit more free to, to move. Well, now what does he plan to do? Is he? OK, yeah. so that happened. Knight f4 check and king f5 were played very quickly. I'm not getting the refresh on that game for some reason. OK, we'll put it on the board. And now uh, white has a choice. He can take an h-pawn. He can take a, a d-pawn. But um, he can take a knight. <laughs> but I don't <laughs> think that one's, that one's good. Yeah, I don't think that, that one is good. Um, so I think regardless of what black, well, I'm sorry. So if white takes on d5, both the black rook and the black knight are hanging. So uh, Elshan has problems to solve there. Mm, maybe rook to, rook to d6. OK, rook d6. Um, I could give a check if I wanted. Uh, I think I do want to. I'll play 97 check. Now I need to find a good place for the king. I probably would go just back here. I'm my knight is protected. I'm kind of circling with my knight, but but maybe knight g6. I mean, <laughs> maybe I just go F4. right back. You know, uh, I mean, yeah. um, I think black should be okay with the draw in this position. Uh, I, I definitely agree, but. Um, Feels like you know every everything is loose for black. And it's a little bit loose. That's, that's where tactics start start to appear. Is yeah, you, you have, have to be uh, very careful. Loose pieces. You have to be careful when there are knights on the board. That's that's for sure. So, in fact, actually, I'm sorry. In that line we just looked at, so knight d5, rook d6, knight e7, uh, king e6 is is there? Um, I wanted knight c8, but I, I don't think. I think rook d7 is, is OK. Yeah, I want to go for the trade. Trade, I'm happy with the trade. Yeah. <coughs> in a way. Things seem to be holding together for Elshan. Yeah, in a way, the king gets gets to be on a better placement in e6. Yeah. If you go to take in h5, though, mm -hmm. then your knight will not be staying so great. And I think finally. Yeah, knight um, e5 would be, uh, would I, be a very desirable move. For, I think for so. Yeah, he has to be careful to just start trading some, some pawns. Uh, make sure it doesn't leave that h pawn go f too far. Um, but if black has the knight in d5, then they get to play d3, trading some pawns, and um, should be yeah. should be going for so good for a draw possibly. Good holding chances for Elsham, mm -hmm. I think. But we do have some very uh, important developments in our key matchup of the day in the B group. Uh, Federico uh, Perez Ponza might just be winning against uh, Tigran Haruchunian. Haruchunian. Hmm. So I thought black was getting better in that position. So this was the moment that we last saw the game. And as right. I was going yeah, into. Queen e3, we're expecting queen e3. We're expecting which, which that, happened, but, it's, but I didn't think that. Um, it's kind of crazy that things might have gone so wrong so quickly for, for, for black. black. Yeah, I didn't think black was so bad. So I if mean, you contrast um, this position with the, the position on the board, the white rook somehow swapped places. And, and yeah, here we see yeah, the, the bishop moves out of the way, I mean, and the rook gets to the seventh rank. I mean, this bishop does look like a pawn, but it's doing the, the job of protecting, you know, the weaknesses. And now is the it, rook is getting more active. It was a very funny maneuver there. By yeah, the way. You very put the rook on d5, and then you move the bishop around it. Yeah. Uh, and then you want rook d6, away. but you cannot, because the knight stops you. So you cannot do that. And they are really low on time. And I think maybe we should stay for this game until they reach move 40. Um, we haven't heard yet whether we can. Um, get um, Sergei Ehrenberg um, um, I, I think Jager. unfortunately he has left the building we so, keep uh, <laughs> we keep we keep missing our players that's yeah. not good no worries there um, uh, and here we see the players uh, he was reaching he was reaching he's just 40 seconds left on his clock actually um, this is uh, his second to last move to make before move 40 
and e6 is on the board for, for white. This looks looks quite dangerous. Oh, right. They actually made a few more moves from okay. the position that it had, and e6. Wow, e6. this is really nice. So we saw this idea uh, in Jeffrey's game yesterday, yeah. uh, where you, know, you open up a, a bishop's diagonal using e6. In this case, there's no light squared bishop putting pressure, but, but the dark squared bishop uh, is now going to be a very active piece uh, from the centralized d4 square. Mm, this is tough. I mean, you kind of have to take that pawn. If, if you're not going you to take, take it, that pawn. we're going to see a queen on the board. He didn't take it. He did not <laughs> take it. What? Oh, my goodness. F6. F6. Okay. okay Daring so white to play uh, E7. So that he goes here and, and stopping the, the pawn. King. But mm, I don't believe in F6. I cannot believe this move is good for black. What if I play H4? What if I just take? What if you just take? No, oh my it doesn't goodness. work. You take here. Yeah, it would have been beautiful. You know, <laughs> just take and then goodbye or yeah. losing. Try, trying to reveal the the rook. But uh, no, you, the, no, the that would be a blunder. Uh, I think h4 actually might be quite problematic for black. Um, the idea being, I want to check your king away from f7, and, mm. and only then I will push. And, and then I, maybe take or push. Yeah, one to two. I don't know if you maybe have not time take. to take on e3. Because now we go for bishop f6. Tell me we're going for oh bishop f6 goodness. at some point. There's, there's a double check, but... <laughs> there is, but where do you give it? f5 or f1? Ah, okay, so Federico, very mature player, moves his king out of the way, defends his pawn. All right, uh, that makes more <laughs> sense. Why why get into all this trouble? Yeah, just because just it's fun doesn't mean you should do it. Yeah, and they're and about to reach yeah. move 40. Black needs to make... One more move. In 16 seconds. 14. So. I think this h4, h5 idea, though, isn't going going away. It's not, and, no. uh, If this king is uh, forced away from that f7 square, e7 will, will win the game. So black gives one last check with just two seconds on his clock, actually, and uh, makes the time control up, up to half an hour, uh, plenty of time to, to think about how things could have gone wrong. <sighs> it's, it's going to be tough. This one I looking mean, very good for Federico. And where actually do you think the mistake was? Hmm. Because I mean, look at these, these pieces. They got stuck on the other side of the board. Yeah. That bishop in d4 was such a nice idea. Let's go back after f takes e3. I did not this believe. Is, this is kind of the problem with knights in the end game, right? Uh, c4 in the middle game, great square for a knight. It controls a ton of key, key squares. But in this end game, sure, it's putting pressure on a couple of white's pawns. But this bishop from d4 defends the pawns, attacks the king, even looks at the queen side as well. Um, this is why bishops, especially with both sides on the board, are, are very powerful in the end game. That, that is true. Yeah, especially if you cannot create some counterplay for yourself, like a passport or something, then you're going, yeah. you're going to have a tough time. Oh, here, knight b2, attacking the rook, rook d5. And then, yeah, this, this bishop Check. maneuver just comes very naturally. King to f2. Hmm, I'm not sure about this check. Maybe black was overly confident about their chances of improving yeah. their rook and completely uh, missed the idea of e6. I would think the e6 square is actually a great place for the black rook. So maybe uh, simply knight c4 here. Well, idea. for the black rook? No, no. You mean for the king, maybe? For the king, okay. Yeah, the, if you can get it, but well. it's so hard. It's so hard to get it there. Um, I was just imagining uh, if the if the game had continued, uh, so if this uh, had continued similar to the game where black okay. plays knight c4, uh, white plays bishop c5. Uh, I thought rook e6 here might might put some un, un, uncomfortable pressure on that e5. Pawn. I see. All right. And if you uh, play bishop d4, I might bring my king actually all the way up to f5 if if I'm allowed. Oh. The other yeah. way you want. To. Uh, maybe oh. I'll start with with g5 actually, or g. Uh, maybe maybe king h7. King h7, yeah. and then yeah, if I try to stop you, then you'll still go there. Then h5, and you try to you know bring the king, put more pressure, and try to get to e4. Yeah, that yeah. that's a nice idea. Uh, of course, though, always very tempting to just get active. Uh, and it I, is, that's, but that's what Black tried to do, but his pieces actually end up kind of blocked out of the game. That's the thing, because you have to make sure that there are some weaknesses you can attack if you, if your opponent has any way to create some fortress, and then your pieces will be stuck. Of course, right. um, well, you have to. Then, then you get what happens in the game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah, and we have had a few more bottom. moves, I think, after. Um, rook d2 check, white went to e1. And yeah, uh, Tigran has more decisions to make now. Um, 
what to do about this H4, H5 idea. And I'm sure White actually has other, other ideas as, as well that, that would be very, very threatening. Of course, this bishop f6 move. Bishop f6 might, is might very be an annoying for sure. I, I mean. In fact, if, if we just imagine, um, well, it's tough to pass for black, so uh, we, we can't really imagine. But bishop a5 f6. a5 maybe? Yeah. I wonder, is that even. a5 I, I could take, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and now then, if you take a5, I, I do no, have bishop f6. No, I was going f6. to leave, oh, well, but. Okay. Yeah, if you take a5, I take your rook. But if you leave, then hmm, maybe simply bishop c5 is is creating some, some threats. Trying to go e7 and yeah. then rook there and then promote. It's for it's, sure a very too many options. Way too many. So so this one looking like a win for for Federico, we think. Um, of course, this means with a win in this game, uh, Federico will be joining Sergei Azarov and Alexei Sorokin at the top of the leaderboard. Uh, four and a half out of seven is, is enough to tie for first right now in the Winter Classic. I'm sure in these, pa in these last two rounds, uh, somebody's going to pull away. Uh, that's Probably. usually the way it works. Yeah, it's or, or we might have uh, some uh, matches yeah, some for the first place. Could be very, very interesting indeed. We'll see. That remains to be seen. Um, for the moment, it's, let's go back to uh, VAR against Oparin and see how things have changed in that game. Um, all right, so last time we stopped, we, it was, they had just entered that um, four versus three Rukan game, and mm. VAR was able to things, get to the, have progressed. <laughs> uh, the moves that I told you. Get yeah. the king to f4, prepare for e4. He didn't get to play it yet, but rook b7, very nice last move by by white, kind of keeping black um, yeah, he's in, in, in some kind of a zoog zone. Nearly like, completely zoog zone. Mm -hmm. uh, rook f2, uh, and, and this, there's yeah. the f2 square and the f1 square for this rook. Yeah, that's that's what uh, black should do. Actually, this is this is the best defense yeah, mechanism. So, uh, of course, did the, not think, the reason I why it is, uh, you were explaining white's idea is e4, right? Yes. And you really want to capture back on e4 with your pawn, mm -hmm. not not your king. Not the king, And no. the reason for that is you make a passed pawn. So with this rook on f1, uh, of course, taking back that way is illegal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, is there any way here for White to, to force this rook off of this this file? It, it actually looks kind of difficult to achieve. Well, uh, I think um, so. Var actually played rook f7. So the idea is probably after rook f2. Maybe we want to go for some g4. Uh, I'm not sure if it works. G4. I think h takes. Why he put the rook in f7, I do not know. I guess he wants the rook to be in f2. Yeah, uh, maybe he's just mar marking some time. <laughs> um, not every move has to be, uh, it, you know, no, an improvement for No, of course not, for, for but, right here, but, but let's try to find, uh, let's try to see if there's um, some winning idea. Right, uh, I don't I felt g4 it, was moment. supposed to be so, something okay. I want to Here's do. Here's an idea. What if I put my rook on the first rank? So uh, I'll play like rook a7, for example. Uh, you can play rook f1, uh, and I'll play, well, let's say rook f2, it doesn't really, or rook a2, it doesn't really matter. Well, that's what I thought in the first place, but mm -hmm. he went to f7. I think uh, maybe he's worried that this king could go back. So yeah, king g7, and then I guess the, the could... thing to calculate is king g5. This was my idea. Uh, and unfortunately, I, I think I'm just giving up way too many pawns. For this, yeah, this I mean, all work. of these will be will be lost. Yeah, there's there's not enough uh, time to, to really try to checkmate black there. I think it's it's just a uh, just a draw. But it, if white doesn't go for this idea, I don't think there's there's much else. Well, there is, there is, there is. There uh, is. There is a mating idea. I don't know uh, if you can well, do it. Yeah, somehow. It, but it would be with that with that line we we just looked at, right? No, with the rook in h8. But I don't know how I can get it. How is that ever <laughs> I'm confused. If I get my king to f6. <laughs> well, okay, you can't. That's more ridiculous than my idea. I know, I know. I, I'm trying. I'm yeah. trying to find some some improvements. So, and we do do see rook f2 on the board. Um, um, well, Varen did yeah. take some time, but he's... Uh, so Var is, is going to try to win this game for a long time. Uh, there's actually only one other game still going on in the A group, but it's a very, very important game for our standings. That is Renat Jumabayev against Sam Savian. 
Uh, of course, this is where white played this super interesting exchange sacrifice and uh, tried to play against the black king and, and black's weaknesses. And black did give it back. He was like, let's see yes. how that happened. <laughs> let's move a few, let's go a few moves back. I believe we were kind of stuck around maybe after night, knight of four. We were no. looking at, at knight d5 five. options, yeah. Yeah, so. so knight takes, queen takes, rookie five. Rookie five. All right, so now okay. we saw knight d5. Typical, we expected that the knight will be placed in d5. That's yes. the right placement for it. So now black is trying to regroup a little bit and bring their queen to start protecting some of these weaknesses. You cannot afford to lose them all. Okay. So right now, uh, after knight takes f4, white has one pawn for the exchange. But uh, but now we see bishop c6 putting pressure yeah. on e4. No, White's pawns are all really, really mobile on the king's side, and this is... Yeah, like F4, we're trying yeah. now for F4, and this move is very interesting because now you cannot capture any four because we are looking for <laughs> some mates. And so uh, I guess black decided enough was enough. Enough right? was enough, no more knights, go away knight, um, and now let's try to play this position. Um, this one, though, looks, looks like something for, for Renat here. We do have a pawn down for black, but uh, now queen g5 is going to try to get the pawn back, but I think most importantly for black is to try to put pressure on the g-file and on this king, and make sure that your king, their own <laughs> king, black's king, yeah. is going to stay safe. Of course, e easier said than done, right? Uh, both kings kind of in some open in open positions here. So rook e1, f5, rook g1, now we're threatening some discoveries, so be ready for that. Queen f4 check first, making sure to escape with the queen first. And now Sam is not so worried about the discovery because the bishop doesn't really have that good of a placement for it. So rook e5, right. making sure um, white's queen will be closed from the diagonal to make sure the rook and queen cannot be combined and cooperate. Um, so now we see Renat improving the position of his queen on the other side, trying to go through. Oh wow, queen a7. Through the other side. Um, and I, rook e8. I like that idea actually. All right. Oh, and he repeats once. So they did repeat the position twice, technically, right? Yes. I mean, this position is twice. Right. It and appeared twice. Yeah. And I think queen a7 has been played. Um, Sam is currently thinking, should I take the draw or not in uh, this position? I, I would be hard pressed to play on here. With, but we're with not the black pieces. with the black pieces, okay. Uh, with white, uh, I think you have a, a few options. Um, the king does, your king on h1 does look a little unsafe. Mm -hmm. But you have this rook, you have this bishop. And if, if I can try and channel my, my yasser, <laughs> The A3 is hanging. <laughs> yeah, but F2 it also. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm not sure you wanna you wanna take that pawn for the F2 one. The F2 is way too close to the king. Maybe I'll, I'll take I'll take F5. Uh, maybe this is a little less less absurd than, than Queen A3. It's kind of interesting here to mm, psychologically what are the players thinking and well, and if we will still be live, uh, it would be nice to actually yeah. get one of them. Of and, course. And uh, I actually am quite curious what what happens uh, after rook e8, uh, he takes f5 because that looks kind of strong for white. Of course, now the the bishop discoveries have become a little bit more potent, and if you take on g2, I can I can take back with a check. Where to move the king? That is the question. Well, while you're thinking of that, I'll, I'll think of what I'm doing with the white king <laughs> because this looks because this is yeah, uh, maybe is going this to is, be this messy. This is why you can't go for this. Uh, queen a five, maybe. Queen a five. Yeah, I just controlling e one. Sounds like a good idea. Defending f5 by pure chance. Maybe I can just try to get h3. Ah, c7. Oh, you take it yes. with check. So maybe h8, but then if you go to h8, then queen c3 is, is always going to be a threat. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know, this looks, looks risky for, for Rina. Let's I'm not think, sure if you're let's think about this position this. for a little bit longer, so. Taking f5. 
I think bishop takes g2 must, must be correct. Uh, Should be. I mean, unless I want to just move the king somewhere and let well, you take, yeah. then and then I have queen f3 check, but then well, it's I, I not going to the Well, I think g1 is, is actually a better square for my bishop than, uh, or, or g1 is a better square for my rook than g2, because this, this first rank weakness isn't, isn't going to be there. Maybe go king f8. What do you think about this move? Yeah, I think this might actually be the best square. Uh, I think I still have to try queen a5. I, I don't see any other, any other move for white. Yeah, but at least now you're not taking c7 with check, so I can it's try true. to think of my attacking yeah, ideas. Queen Maybe queen f3, f3, f3. Might, might be working. And now you have to be careful. You cannot really move this queen a5 because you're allowed. Play queen d2, maybe. <laughs> You take h3, I, I go to g1. I have a lot of threats. Oh, wait. <laughs> a lot of nasty threats. Mm, very unpleasant. Hmm. Maybe I can escape, maybe not. This, this queen is getting a lot of mileage, going to a5 and it then is. back to b2. It and is. Then to That's a very interesting board, comeback with the queen. Just I don't know. This, this looks very tough for Sam if, if you're not chooses to play on. Is there anything else that black can do here instead of rook e8? Maybe just not going back and saying, I don't think you actually have that much. Uh, well, the problem for black is always where this king. this king is, right? Where so is maybe it going to be? king f, f, f file? f7, f8? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> but the problem is queen b8. Queen b8 check or not check, and then that pawn is going to be hanging with a check, so it's going to be kind of unpleasant. Well, okay, let's say king f7. If you play queen b8, uh, I might be taking on e4. Maybe. And then uh, after I take e4, you can take c7 with check, but I'll have... Oh, I want to take with the bishop. I'm sorry. I want to pressure your king. And then you have rook e7. Yeah, rook e7 to, to block the check. And then uh, uh, you're actually losing a tempo with queen c7. Usually with check, you gain a tempo, but with, with the, the counter threat to the queen, uh, white sure. would actually uh, run, out of, run out of moves there. That is uh, becoming... Uh, this is a tough decision to make with, uh, with black here. Because yeah, you don't that's know. That's why Sam is, is thinking so long as well. Yeah, and you, you sometimes don't know. Because I, I, I've seen a lot of grandmasters, you know, repeating the position twice, pretending mm -hmm. like they actually want to draw. Well, uh, but they're waiting for you to spend all your time, yeah. and then they don't want to draw. I do <laughs> want to mention, though, um, you see uh, on the board, Renat actually has 26 minutes left, and Sam has just over 22 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, but this is move 41. They, yeah, or 42. They, they, they just, just hit time control. Mm -hmm. So they're likely repeating to get that extra half hour added on. And now Renat has thought for a few minutes, and he's gone for queen a7. And I think he's, he's decided on what he wants to do. So now Sam taking his time, making sure he finds the absolute best defense. That's for sure. It's going to be a tough game. Uh, we do still have a few games left. Uh, yeah, so not much in group. Um, it's just this game with Renat, and then VAR pressing in that four versus three end game. So he actually and did come back on the second round. Ah, He's okay. He and went yeah, for King for G7. The king G7. And that now it'll be interesting, interesting to see if he actually goes. He goes. He does not go for King G5. He just he plays goes 44. E4. Um, and so I think this is much closer to a draw now than the four versus three. It is. Uh, now black has to improve the position of the rook. I think he should not stay there anymore. Yes. So we take, king takes. And now I'm anticipating something like maybe rook e1 check and getting the rook on. <laughs> or maybe just rook a1. And so interestingly, so these are the only two games going on in the A group. We're expecting Rigori to be able to hold that position. And we're expecting, uh, well, I'm expecting at least, I think Renat's a fighting player. Uh, he's not missed any chances, really, this tournament. I'm expecting him to, to try and win that against Sam Sevian. And in the B group, Interestingly, since the last time we checked in, only That's one move true. has been played in either game. Yeah. <laughs> so these players really taking their time here. So in the this, group. this was um, the game between Emilio Cordova and Elshan Moradia Badi. And um, we see uh, King G3. That was a move that we had not considered previously. Yeah. Not taking By either way. hanging pawn, just 
Just the yeah, and now okay, those two pawns are still hanging, but so is the there's, knight. There's so some there's some funny business. Knight e five, rook h seven makes a threat. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's not going to be a very fun, very fun idea. Yeah. So threatening, of course, rook h five with a checkmate. So f five and improved. I don't believe you can improve. You can do anything about that. So let's. Yeah. So knight knight e five is not going to work. No. Uh, interesting that we thought f five was a big improvement for the king, but yeah. it's got kind of trapped in the center of the board, and that's why I guess white left this knight on f four. Uh, making sure that these these threats against the king could could remain with e6 and g6 both being covered. I wonder if uh, rook b8 is a good move in this position. Ah, so the idea is, of course, what what do you play on rook f7? Just check. And then king f2 and. And then we take take the pawn. Yes. And we're not mated. Uh, and the the rook takes your f pawn, but. It's it's a different yeah, kind of three versus three. But it's it, it going to be a little be bit un dif difficult, but I think yeah. um, Black should be able to hold this. Uh, but maybe we have some other options after King G three. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. If you move this knight, Rook H seven is going to come. Um, well, for sure you shouldn't move it in E five. So yeah, well, you yeah, at least even have if, the even option. if you go to like D six though, uh, Rook H seven, King yeah. E five is my only move, and H five falls. I think if h5 is falling, you'd rather have the knights off the board than on the board. That is true. So you have to find the right place to trade the knights. Yeah. So I think, uh, I don't think there's any way we're saving this h5 pawn. I, unless no, you see something. No, but, but, but black currently has an extra pawn on the yeah. board. So, you know, but, uh, giving out the pawn, uh, it's, you uh, know, yeah, it's uh, fine. I think then your idea with rook b8 is probably the best way to give it up. You just mm -hmm. go for the pure rook end game. Uh, your d pawns are, are pretty far advanced, actually. So things like d three are going to kind of shake loose the, the white structure, and uh, I think this this might be holdable. This should be, but uh, still, like you need to. It's not going to be so easy. Like yeah, white definitely. will stay with f and h pawns, and then you'll have the d pawn. The question is, should you try to keep that pawn or give it up? Because you know, f and h, you should be able to make a draw. But you should. <laughs> if <laughs> but yes, yeah. It's um, it's not an easy one. But this uh, might be a very long game, so um, it's it's a game to, to watch out for, for sure. Yeah. And then in our game against Federico Ponza and Tigran Harutunian, uh, Black no has moves. not moved. Yeah. It's been uh, around 25 minutes, I think, 20 minutes, and uh, Black still deep in thought here. Um, he probably realizes it's uh, it's a very bad position, close right. to losing, if not completely lost. So we do not really see any yeah. ways for Black to be able to stop this very annoying pawn. Right. There are a lot of ways for White to try to improve <laughs> h4, h5, as we discussed previously. Yeah, bishop c5 as well. It's it's all bishop it's c5. All nice. Push the pawn, go with the rook on d8, and support the pawn from promoting. So those are just a few of White's ideas, and of with course. the rook on d2 completely restricted by White's very strong bishop in d4, um, it's going to be very tough for Black to find something to come into the game. So I think we're going yeah. to um, uh, yeah. anticipate the win for, for White in this position. Well, as these games are wrapping up, why don't we take a look and see where we stand, uh, both in the A group and the B group. Uh, let's see the A group standings first. Renat Jumabayev, of course, his game is still going. It seems as though, in the lines that we were looking at, he might actually have some pressure against Sam Sevian. So uh, we're expecting Renat to uh, not lose this game, but definitely all three results are possible in that game. For sure, yes. Uh, Jeffrey Zhang managed to win today, bringing his score back up to four and a half. Uh, so for the moment, he's tied with Renat, but of course we expect Renat to be able to score some number of points, either a <laughs> half point or one point. Uh, Daniel Naroditsky drew quite early on today, and Sam Sevian still uh, in, in progress against Renat. Uh, Safu has drawn against Daniel. Uh, Grigory Oprin is trying to hold a 4 versus 3 rook end game against Var Akobian, and for the moment it seems as though he's going to be able to hold that. Mm -hmm. Victor Erdos uh, lost his game today to Jeffrey, and Alexei Serrana managed to defe defeat uh, Hovanas Kabuzian. And so they go to three and two and a half, respectively. Uh, why don't we check out the B group standings as well? Uh, Sergey Azarov and Alexei Sorokin, the two leaders going into today, uh, have actually drawn each other. So their score moves to four and a half out of seven as well. Uh, Melikachin also drew his game. 
And be on the lookout because we expect Federico Perez Ponsa to be able to win his game against Tigran Ahruch Union. And he will move to four and a half out of seven as well, joining the leaders. And in the game uh, between Emilio Cordova and Elshan Maradi Abadi, uh, we're expecting a draw, hoping for a draw maybe. Hoping for a draw, yeah. But uh, Emilio does seem to have some kind, of, uh, some kind of edge in that end game. Some tricky, some tactical tricks still um, yeah. in the position. Definitely so. look for, for that position to clarify, actually, in the next few moves. They'll mm -hmm. be slow moves, both players, yeah. I'm sure, taking a lot of time, but it looks like clar some clarifying is Yeah, is but not that much time, because now they are they're yeah. spent quite some time after the time control, and we are going to approach some more blitzing, <laughs> I think. Right. So, so be on be the lookout. Uh, Justin Wang has drawn his game uh, against Sergey Ehrenberg and Chris Yu has also drawn today. And that is where we stand after seven rounds in the Winter Chess Classic. What uh, a day yeah, today. <laughs> definitely a, a day of excitement, uh, a, a day of very interesting games. Jeffrey Zhang uh, kind of just demolished his opponent, and uh, it was an interesting interview to, to see him ex explain that game as well. Uh, well, uh, thank you guys very much for, for joining us here today. Uh, as always, if you want to follow the games for yourself, you can still see the games that are in progress at uschesschamps.com. Um, tomorrow, we will be on at our normal time, 3.30 p.m., but be on the lookout uh, for Monday when we'll be starting a couple hours earlier. Uh, any closing thoughts on today's round, Sabina? Uh, well, I'm just uh, really looking forward for the last two two games I think uh, everyone everyone is trying uh, their best uh, trying to catch up with the leaders or staying in the leading position yeah. but um, everyone has uh, oh. done a really we yeah I think Elsha uh, just blundered result. 95 I cannot believe that oh my goodness 95 was played and uh, wow so at the very end of our show here Emilio Cordova does win his game against Elshan Elshan falling into that that mating trap that we actually talked about um, yeah. Unfortunate there for, for Elshan. But uh, okay, that, that'll be the end of our show, I think. Um, so thank you guys very much for joining us as always. Uh, be sure to tune in tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. for more live coverage of the Winter Chess Classic. This has been a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club.